Welcome to the module related to the bow tie analysis. Now, previously we have gone through the HAZOP analysis, risk assessment analysis, event tree analysis, fault tree analysis. Then uh, we have gone through the detailed study about the cause consequences and then LOPA. Now, this is the last analysis or ultimate analysis being carried out in the chemical engineering operations related to safety aspect. So, let us have a brief introduction about this BOT, BOT methods. Now, this BOT method is a risk assessment process that can be used to analyze, arrange and demonstrate underlying relationship in high risk scenario. So, as the name uh, of bow tie uh, came from the final shape, this final shape uh, that this diagram takes, which looks like a man's bow tie like this. Now, um, it is a visual representation of a prevention and mitigation steps taken in an organization to eliminate or at least reduce the chances of any kind of accident. Now, this is a typical bow tie diagram. Now, here you are having two different aspects like prevention and mitigation. Now, there are various threats related to the process and these threats are supplemented by these barriers. So, this is the hazard and this is the top event. So, this threat is coming through the uh, different kind of barriers and sometimes these barriers they prevent all these things to escalate the things. And similarly, the there are several, several consequences and these consequences is the, again they are approaching to the top event and sometimes they are inhibited by the various ba barriers like this, then it may go to the escalation. Now, as shown in the figure, the broader sense of this diagram represents a two factor. Now, we are going into detail of this particular figure. First, it provides a visual representation and summarize all probable accident scenarios like this. That is the threats, consequences, they are arises due to them and their relative escalation factors that could exist. Uh, uh, around uh, certain hazards. And second aspect is that by identifying the control measures, these are the barriers, these are the control measures, you can say. So, by identifying the control measures, the bow tie represents sequentially uh, the steps the company should take to control those scenarios. So, it gives a broader spectrum of uh, the, uh, the steps the company may require for to, to control all those scenarios. Uh, the beauty of this particular analysis uh, which create a difference uh, between the this and others is that it also identifies the ways through which the control measures that is the barrier in the diagram for both threat as well as the consequences they fail. Now, these factors or conditions are called the escalation factors. Uh, it is uh, very much uh, represented in this uh, both uh, the preventive and the mitigation aspect. So, a summarized representation of escalation factor and the required measures uh, associated with the failure is also included in that particular diagram. So, there are possible control measures for the escalation factors as well as uh, which is why there is, a, uh, uh, there is also a special type of control, they, uh, they are called an escalation factor or control, which has an indirect but crucial effect on the main hazard. So, the by visualizing the interaction between the controls, different controls and their escalation factor. Uh, one can see how the overall system weakens and uh, when the control have escalation factors. So, beside the basic bow tie diagram, management system should also be considered and integrate with the bow tie to give an overview of uh, what activities keep a control working and who is responsible for those control because you are having various control zones in that particular bow tie diagram. 
Now, integrating the management system in a bow tie demonstrates that how hazards are managed by a company. Now, this bow tie can also be used effectively to use that hazard are managed to an acceptable level ALRP which we have already discussed in other modules. So, by combining the strength of several safety techniques and the contribution of human and organizational factor, this bow tie diagram facilitate workforce the understanding of hazard management and their own role in it. That is very important. This what is your role to control that hazard. So, it is a method that can be understood by all layers of uh, the organization due to its highly visual, visual and intuitive natures. While it also provides uh, new insights to the hazard, uh, hazard safety and environment professionals uh, that is sometimes referred as uh, HSC professional. So, let us have a look about the history of this uh, bow tie. So, it is uh, usually said that the first real bow tie diagram appeared in the imperial chemical industry. Uh, UK, it is a UK based company. This course notes on uh, of a lecture on Hazen that is hazard analysis given at the University of Queensland, Australia in 1979. But how and when this method found um, uh, its exact origin is not completely clear. So, the catastrophic incident on the Piper Alpha platform in 1988 awoke uh, the oil and gas industry. So, the after the report of uh, Lord Cullen who concluded that uh, there was far too little understanding of hazard and their accompanying risks uh, that are a part of operation. The, the urge rose of uh, gain more insight in the casualty of uh, seemingly independent event and condition and to develop a systematic uh, or schematic ways of assuring control over these hazards. So, in early 90s, the Royal Dutch or Shell group, they adopted the bow tie method as a company standard for analyzing and managing risk. Now, this uh, uh, Shell uh, company, they facilitated the extensive research in the application of uh, the bow tie method and developed a strict rule set for the definition of all parts that is based on their ideas of best practice. So, the primary motivation of uh, the shell company was the necessity of uh, assurance that appropriate risk controls are consistently in place throughout all worldwide operations. Now, remember when we talk about the worldwide operation, the ground scenario is altogether different in all, all operations because they are located at, at various zones, various uh, uh, different countries, etcetera. So, following the uh, shell, the bow tie method rapidly gained support throughout the industry. Now, as these diagrams, they appear to be suitable visual tool to keep overview of risk management practices rather than replacing any of the commonly used system. So, in the last decade, the bow tie method also spread outside the oil and gas industry to include uh, aviation, mining, maritime, various chemicals and healthcare, etcetera. Now, uh, the methodological parents to bow tie are that while the origin of bow tie method itself is uh, unclear. There were other methods which were either uh, at the root of bow tie thinking or which come came later, but uh, can be used to explain the type of thinking. So, uh, we do have some idea about that what logically preceded in uh, the bow tie. So, we have already mentioned that there are two things that bow tie does. First, the bow tie analysis chain of the event or they analyze the chain of various event. Uh, or the possible accident scenarios. So, the way it does uh, that was inspired by three different methods. The first method is the fault tree which we have already discussed which covers the left side of the bow tie in the different form. 
The second is the event tree. Again, we had a previous uh, discussion about this event tree. So, which can be seen uh, on the right hand side of the bow tie. So, uh, we, may, we are recalling the, the figure again like this, this one, this is the right hand side of the figure. So, uh, but uh, this uh, uh, also different from the original event tree. So, do not be get confused uh, while referring the original event tree, it is bit different from the uh, event tree. Lastly, the casual factor that is charting which is most likely the origin of escalation factor. Now, the second thing the bow tie does is to identify control measures uh, that an organization has in place. Now, this type of thinking is more easily explained with the famous uh, uh, Swiss cheese model by James Re uh, Reason, which is originated in early 90s. Now, a bow tie diagram uh, that visualizes the risk you are dealing with in a just one easy to understand the picture. So, it is a small and easy to understand figure. Now, this diagram is shaped like bow tie creating the clear difference between the proactive and the, the reactive management. The power of a bow tie XP diagram is that it gives you an overview of a multiple plausible scenario in a single picture. So, in short it provides a very simple visual explanation of a risk uh, that would be much more difficult to explain otherwise. So, uh, the bow tie diagram uh, we can divide broadly into different parts. One is that hazard that is the start of uh, the bow tie diagram. So, we need to identify because we have already discussed the hazard identification tools. The top event this defines the top event causing the hazard. There is a threat that is you need to identify the threat that caused the top event. Then there is a consequences there may be several consequences or a single consequence. Then preventive and recovery barriers define the list of a preventive barriers for a particular threat. So, if you recall the figure we have in list, we have pointed out several threats. They are supported by the barriers, those, those are the preventive things for a particular threat. Then there is an uh, escalation factor for preventive and recovery of those barri uh, barriers. Then there are certain EF barriers. So, we have already this escalation barriers, escalation factors, uh, etcetera, we have already enlisted in that uh, bow tie diagram. If you recall this diagram, we, we, we were having the, the top event and there are various uh, things like uh, threats, escalations, etc. They were included in that uh, particular bow tie diagram. Now, there are various parts of this uh, bow tie. So, we had already discussed these points in event tree analysis and a fault tree analysis, but as these are basic elements of the method. So, let us have a discussion about these elements in a very short manner. Like hazard, anything that is inside or around the process unit public organization which has the potential to cause the damage, harm or adverse health effect on something or someone. Harm that is the physical injury or a damage uh, uh, to health, hazard the potential source of a harm to a worker. There is a risk that is the probability of occurrence of uh, harm during the exposure to hazard. Now, there are various type of hazards like chemical hazards and the physical hazards. So, uh, couple of examples are uh, chemical hazards that are hydrocarbon under pressure, smoke, toxic materials, volatile flu fluids and tanks. There may be certain physical hazards like uh, moving road tankers or vehicles, elevated objects, noise, people working at height and sometimes the high voltage. There may be certain biological uh, or uh, uh, other hazards like biological hazards, some toxicological lab hazards, biological bacteria, sometimes pathogens, etc. Sometimes you may experience the working outside the country without the family members that is the psychological hazard. Then sometimes maltreatment or sometimes uh, miscommunication, etc. These are the, the other hazards. Uh, so, we have enlisted uh, several hazards and its uh, harm um, 
like uh, different things uh, may be attributed to the knife, it may create um, the cut, sometimes bleeding, etc. Then it may be attributed to the substance like benzene, it may create the leukemia or it, carcinoma. Then it may be attributed to several material aspects that uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis, it may lead to the tuberculosis may be attributed to the source of energy, may be because of the electricity, sometimes you may have a shock or electro caution. Then there may be conditions, sometimes may be wet floor, you may slip, fall, injured, etc. Then the process uh, attributed to the process uh, may be related to the, uh, the hazard associated with this welding and the harm is the metal fume etc. So, uh, you must have a clear cut picture or you must be in a position to differentiate between the hazard and harm. Uh, next aspect of uh, the bow tie part is the top event. The hazard always occurs due to the mishappening. The top event is the, mo the uh, moment where the control is lost over that particular hazard. So, you, you are not having any kind of uh, things which you need to control. So, top event does not mean that the accident got happened, but is the beginning of uh, the accident. So, at this point it can be controlled if possible measures have been taken or sometimes you may refer it as a near miss type of thing. The top event uh, that can be a threat or a consequence depend upon what is describing and that is why the top event is enlisted over here. Now, threat, the, uh, the definition of threat is uh, something which cause top event and these can be the multiple type of threats for initiating a top event. A possible cause, uh, um, this can be a thermal, chemical, biological, electrical, sometimes electronic, sometimes may be attributed to a kinetic, environmental, radiation or human factor. So, there are several examples like high temperature inside or outside the process unit, uh, then tolerable limit, sometimes the corrosion inside the vessel, reactor or a pipeline, the biological uh, contaminants uh, uh, to cause illness or health hazard sometimes high or a low pressure than the tolerable limit, sometimes erosion of a material due to the prolonged use, sometimes it may be attributed to the power fluctuation may be higher or a low, lower voltage, sometimes ultraviolet radiation, sometimes uh, like uh, UV present in sun rays deteriorates the various materials such as plastic, resin, etc. There may be certain environmental conditions such as uh, weather, temperature or uh, humidity sometimes human error that is lack of concentration, mistake, anxiety and other factors. Sometimes may be attributed to the design of the system, sometimes the improper maintenance may lead to this kind of uh, scenario. Now, let us uh, have an example. So, let us assume a fire in a process unit, they may happen in a factory due to the cigarette butt left uh, near the explosive material, but the fire is controlled immediately through the fire extinguisher. In that particular case, the explosive material is hazard, the burning of the material is the top event, the cigarette butt is the threat and the fire extinguisher is the mitigation step. So, uh, do you know the a large number of uh, fire accident cases uh, uh, were caused just because of the cigarette butt. So, Bangladesh uh, they have recorded 13.55 percent of the fire accidents in year 2017 due to cigarette butts. So, this is for the sake of an example. Uh, then again go back to the, uh, the different parts of bow tie, the consequences, the result obtained due to the happening of uh, the top event there can be more than one consequence for every top event. So, always try to describe every consequence related to the top event and do not directly move towards final losses uh, due to the consequence such as uh, loss of man, material, asset damage, environmental impact, economical and social losses. So, these terms should not be considered as consequences. 
Now, besides uh, the consequences uh, shall be written in terms of immediate concern like uh, for example, the breakage of a conveyor belt, oil spill into the sea, toxic cloud formation, etcetera. So, there may be so, so many. Sometimes it may create harm to the people or a worker, may be attributed that no injury or damage to the health, slightly injury or, uh, uh, or injured or health effect handled using first aid or a minor medical treatment. They do not affect the work performance, sometimes minor injury or health effect, loss of work time, etcetera, they affect the work performance, restriction to work activities, restricted work day case, etcetera. The complete rest of full recovery that is the lost work day case, because sometimes the worker may be asked to go for the complete rest for the full recovery. So, that is attributed that is a lost work day case. Similarly, sometimes uh, the restriction to the work activity, sometimes they are not, they are assigned to a temporary job or sometimes they are away uh, for the, the activities for which they are trained. Then in that particular case, this is termed as the restricted work day case. Uh, there are several examples of uh, uh, consequences, the major injury or health effect uh, that is a permanent or a partial disability, they affect the work performance ultimately lead to the economic losses of the company. Uh, sometimes irreversible health damage such as hearing loss, irreparable bone injuries, etcetera, this may happen. Uh, there may be a single fatality that can occur due to the accident or illness. Now, illness may be attributed to the malfunctioning. There may be certain multiple fatality like in Bhopal that can occur due to an accident. Uh, other examples of uh, like that damage to asset, sometimes it may ha happen that there is no damage at all within the plant. Then there may be a, a, a consequence of slight damage, they do not affect the regular operation. So, slight, um, slight effect may take place and then uh, there is no process loss or any kind of uh, uh, hampering towards the regular operation there may be certain minor damage. This may affect the operation, but uh, it can be repaired in a short span of time. There may be certain local damage, this is uh, the effect of uh, uh, effect the operation for a specific time interval, there may be a chance of uh, partial shutdown. There are certain major damages, they severely um, affect the operation, but still something is going on. Then there is a think of related to the extensive damage. That means, it this extensive damage may lead the complete shutdown of the process. So, the severe economic loss. So, these are the, the consequences uh, or uh, example of the consequences. Apart from this, uh, because we had uh, discussed this thing related to uh, the asset which is within the, the plant side or within the, the company. Now, there may be certain uh, effects, they are attributed to environment. So, the environmental effects are like zero effect, they do not pose any kind of environmental concern, that means they are within the limit as prescribed by the various regulatory bodies. Then they may have a slight effect, that effect uh, environment near the site of uh, operation. So, uh, there may be negligible financial consequences. There are certain minor effect, they, uh, the contamination exceeds uh, the legislative uh, prescribed criteria for single time and there is the no permanent effect to the environment. So, it you can repair it or repair uh, the environment itself repair that thing in situ. Then there are certain localized effect that the contamination exceeds the legislative prescribed limits and effects uh, uh, this severely affects the neighborhood environments. There are several major effects, the severe environmental damage and company requires the extensive measures to restore the contaminated environment to its original state. That means, a heavy um, uh, economic loss. Then there is a massive effect that persistent severe environmental damage and damaging the effect to the environment and the major economic loss to the company and sometimes the regulatory body may ask 
to shut down its operation. So, that is the massive effect. Uh, apart from this, uh, one psychological factor is that the impact on reputation. So, if there is no impact, then may be attributed that no public awareness. There may be slight impact that public awareness may exist, but there is no public concern. So, nobody bothers. There is a chance that uh, you may have a limited impact. So, some local public concern and local media or the political tension with the potentially adverse aspect of the company operation. So, sometimes it may reflect. There may be a chance of a considerable impact that is the regional public concern and adverse stance of uh, local government. So, again it may lead to the several uh, negative aspect to the company. Then there may be a chance of national impact, the national public concern. So, extensive adverse effect or effect on the functioning of the company, the national media and the political attention attributed to the, the regulatory laws. And sometimes uh, uh, you may experience the mobilization of uh, various action groups. There may be a chance of uh, international impact. The international public attention, uh, extensive adverse attention in international media with potentially severe impact on access of uh, to new areas, grants and uh, tax litigation. So, uh, you may recall or you, or you may refer uh, to the Bhopal gas tragedy when it was an international impact as well as the national impact on the company or called Union Carbide. Now, let us have a look about the barriers. So, the ba barriers they are the measures taken uh, to prevent the threats or to prevent the consequences of a top event once the hazard is released. So, these barriers may be mechanical like relief wall, cooling jackets, etcetera, operational like standard operating procedures, SOPs, notices, etcetera. There may be technical that is the design modification or any other non-physical activity. There are several examples of uh, threat barriers, uh, the guard or protective shield like protective coating, sometimes covering, corrosion, inhibitors, machine guards, fencing, etcetera. Then may be certain PRVs like pressure relief walls, etcetera, the thermocouples, uh, may be auto cut off uh, for the temperature, etcetera. Then operational changes, uh, sometimes may these operational changes uh, may be clubbed under the head of threat barriers so, like temperature, flow rate, pressure, speed, voltage, etcetera. Timely maintenance is also uh, come under the threat barriers because timely maintenance may delay or may prevent the chance of any accidents. Then the reducing congestion in the operation area so that uh, the release may be neutralized once it happens. The other example of consequence barriers like gas, fire and smoke alarms, emergency shutdown systems, you may have a fire water deluge system, the fire and blast walls, the emergency response plans, training and drills, uh, you may have a business uh, resumption plan, contamination removal plans also clubbed under the head of consequence barrier, the first aid and emergency rooms. Now, let us have a discussion about the escalation factor of barriers. So, always remember that no design is perfect. So, hence no barrier implied can surely prevent uh, the threats at workplace or 100 percent mitigate any kind of consequence. Therefore, there is a need to introduce an escalation factor uh, that describes how the barrier will fail. So, a safety engineer should determine all possible reason of a failure of a barrier as well as the measures to control those fa failures. Now, never describe the failure event of a barrier in a bow tie diagram, but the real weakness of a barrier and its control mechanism should be highlighted. Any kind of uh, abnormal conditions uh, like critical standby equipment is under the maintenance during an emergency. This is the, uh, the example of escalation factor. The plant operating outside the design envelope, the extreme environmental conditions 
may not allow the activation of uh, any kind of planned recovery measures. The incorrect operation of the plant that is attributed to the non-availability of updated operating protocols. Sometimes human error due to the lack of competence uh, or ineffective training. So, in this uh, uh, particular module, uh, we had a discussion about the bow tie. This is uh, the last, uh, um, you can say, the, the protocol of uh, uh, risk mitigation. And uh, we had a discussion about the various uh, uh, integral part of uh, this bow tie diagram. So, in case if you wish to um, study further, you may uh, have a look of all the references listed in this uh, particular slide. Thank you very much.